The Rabana 3 109 win, the Bucks have tied the series at two games each, behind one of the greatest blocks in NBA history from Giannis. The series is now going back to the valley, but the best part of the series is it hasn't even started yet. A series doesn't start until a home team loses, and Game 5 might be the best game we've seen from the season so far. Let's talk about what a beautiful game Game 4 was, and what we should look forward for in Game 5. Leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I make regular NBA content. I have great ideas coming up after the playoffs. If these interest you, do subscribe to the channel. Game 4 probably had a career defining play for a player who's probably going to end up as one of the greatest ever to play the game. That sentence shows how great this game was. Giannis showed the entire league why he's a two time MVP and a superstar in this league. He had an average game, which feels weird to stay when a player has 26, 14, and 8, and if that's an average game for you, it shows how great you are. But he impacted the game in so many other ways than scoring, and that's what separates a superstar from any other regular guy or even a star in the league. His playmaking has taken a jump in this playoffs. He had 8 assists tonight, and I remember from the top of the mind about 5 0 holiday break shots, which were beautifully set up by Giannis. He didn't dominate like he did in game 2 and 3, but he was still the most valuable player on the court. And of course, the block in the end. I don't want to go into if that's a better block than the Brown block in 2016, but it's definitely up there. It's one of the greatest blocks in NBA history, and it showed his defensive IQ, athleticism, and amazing defensive awareness. He guarded both Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton in that play, and that block might have just been the massive momentum shifter which might change the entire series from now on. Even his partner in crime, Chris Milton, had an exceptional game. Chris Milton this playoffs has had 15 co-head or game tying shots in the fourth quarter and overtime this year, and that's the second highest in the last 25 years, only behind 2007 LeBron. He's been very inconsistent all playoffs long, but that's what Milton is. No one was surprised when he put up 40 in this game, and no one is going to be surprised if he scores 10 in game 5. All series long, he's been struggling to score on Mikel Bridges, and he's basically lost that matchup in all games until now. He showed up in the first half of last game, but this game gave us the full Milton package. He missed a lot of shots, which he should have in the first half, but his second half show was exceptional. The Bucks also have figured something out with the Giannis and Milton pick and roll. I hope they would have run this play more in the previous game, but this game, whenever they ran this play, either got an open 3 or a high percentage shot for Milton. Drew Holiday has sucked on offense basically all players long and he even sucked on offense this game. But his defense was the reason Chris Paul was locked up all night. Every single shot CP3 took was highly contested. Every pass CP3 made was contested. As bad as he was on offense, he was just as good on defense. He's the best guard defender in recent history and if they get a little from him on offense, like his playmaking they got tonight, they're really dangerous. The reason home games are an advantage for home teams during these playoffs except for the fans is role players and players like Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis went 1 of 6 from the field, don't get me wrong, but the energy he brought to them and the way he brought the crowd into the game played a massive part in the Bucks staying in the game when Booker was going off in the third quarter. Giannis playing at the 5 is also a massive change which is playing a big part in the series right now, both offensively and defensively. He's one of the best pick and roll big man defenders in the league, probably only behind Anthony Davis and it shows the way Chris Paul is having more trouble scoring on the pick and roll. And yes, Chris Paul, oh my god. That was a massive stinker and a choke job on the night and there's no other way to put it. I love Chris Paul, but he lost in that game. When you get 15 points from Jay Crowder, 10 points from Cam Johnson and 9 points from Cam Payne, you have to win that game, man. I give credit to Juru Holiday for absolutely locking down Chris Paul this game, but Chris Paul isn't called a point guard for not being able to score on great defenders. He's called the point guard for what he's been doing all playoffs long. Last time Chris Paul had a turnover in a big playoff game. They lost the series. OKC 2014. Will it be the case in this series? I wouldn't be surprised. It's sad how such a brilliant player, one of the greatest pongas in NBA history and one of the greatest to ever do it, his career might be defined by two turnovers. When not having turnovers is the reason he's called so good. I'm rooting for the Bucks to win this series, but I don't want Chris Paul's legacy and career to be defined by two turnovers, man.
Another thing I'm sad about this game is Devin Booker in foul trouble. Yes, he had about eight fouls all game, and yes, he should have been pulled out of the game. But how much I would have loved if he didn't go out in the start of the fourth. He had 20 points in the first half and like 18 in the third quarter. He would have easily made it to 50 if he wasn't pulled out for foul trouble. This is one of the greatest performances in finals history, which is blown by fouls. Well, I guess we could say now it's two all-time performances. that have been blown in the same series which have been ruined by the other team both yanis in game 2 and devin booker in game 4 but another interesting thing that this game shows us is about how much the final 2 minutes in a nba game really mean like with 2 minutes left in the game the suns are leading if the suns managed to pull this game off we would have been talking about how bad holiday was on offense how the jeff teague minutes should have been played and about yanis being a lebron again and about how great devin booker is but we aren't basically because of the final 120 seconds this is something i found really interesting another thing i wanted to talk about is something i tweeted like 10 minutes after yans's blog also follow my twitter if you haven't i'm very active on twitter and we can talk about some fun basketball stuff yeah so imagine if like a kevin durant or a lebron james put out the same blog that yans did nba twitter specifically the players specifically would have been all over twitter saying stuff like that sandri like he's in human and stuff like that But the only player who actually tweeted about Giannis this entire finals and to be fair this entire historic playoff run has been having is Damian Lillard. I'm not accusing big players for not being supportive, but it's just something I've observed and found very interesting. Giannis has really won me over this playoffs man. His inspirational come up to the NBA from his grease where he couldn't even afford to buy a shoe, his humble personality and his insane play on the court have made me fall head over heels for him as a basketball player. I can't wait for the series to play out and I hope this a game 7 we can watch in the finals for the first time since 2016 this is the best finals in recent history and according to me a better finals than 2016 because most games in 2016 were blowouts yes it had a much bigger legacy defining moment for lebron but yeah that's a personal opinion and yeah that's all i have for you i have a series coming out about the greatest playoff runs in nba history after these finals and it should be dropping a trailer pretty soon for it we're almost at 100 subscribers and i'd appreciate if you left a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already